Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Today's video is all about avoiding those nasty scratches on the roll bar. And that's actually the least bad scratch I've seen so far. I've seen a lot worse than that right there. So I'm gonna be covering in this video what not to do to end up with that because that can ha happen actually pretty easy and I'm also going to be covering how to not get scratches on the side of the vehicle so stay tuned like and subscribe to help the channel out and uh, watch to find out how to put the top back on properly to avoid a whole lot of heartache we just came back for a, from a ride as you see here in Canada in the afternoon it's very hot and sometimes at supper time it's cold so and now we came back we will uh, try to uh, put back the, the top you will see it's uh, easier when you uh, have the in right instruction to do it after that what we need to do is uh, to pull that thing again so it's uh, unlocking that bar that says lift so it's the same bar as before and then we'll be able to J'ai pas la force à faire du mal, je pense. <laughs> so, I guess for the added strength, I'll be closing the top. Take off anything that might scratch your paint. And do keep in mind that when you're lifting, you don't want to pull towards you or push because that's going to bring the metal frame against your, your top frame. So, you do like Marie-Pia Marie said, you got this button here. You really got to make sure it's lifted and then you lift up here and if you lift from the back so make sure that you've got the velcros on both sides taken off and then it's going to be much lighter so we did make sure that the clip the gray clip here we had pushed down and then you just gotta lift and give it a little push now it's going to clip right back in right here And then that part's pretty easy. So I went inside to make sure that the clips are closed. Now everything is nice and tight as it should be. So you're going to want to slide it in and as soon as it's slid in on the side, you want to clip it to the top so it holds in place. So once you got your back glass or back plastic slid in, you gotta really align it up and make sure that it's not wavy when you're feeding it through. Otherwise it won't move forward and you definitely don't want to force it. So that's the tricky part here. Not so tricky. You've got a top pin right there and you've got an arrow. So you just line those right up and it clips. You can really feel it just suction together. Do the same on the other side. There you go. Yeah, 
So to figure out which window is which, in case you don't remember what order you stored them in, you got this big piece of plastic versus this little lip. Well, the little lips clip into the back right here. And of course, your, your clips up here go on the top. So, big thick piece of plastic, and this big piece of plastic, they match up. Slide first. Now the bottom. Mm. Thanks. So you've got a guider here uh, that you've got to make sure you don't miss. So you start off with the first piece. It's easy to just jump right ahead to the second piece, but you just line that up. And you've got to make sure that the second piece, there's a division in the little bar here and you've got to make sure that second piece jumps up on the rail as well. So you'll want to put in the front piece right in here first and then you'll pull and get this back, this little piece of plastic, into the little liner here. And then you just Velcro down. So you'll notice in the back it was unclipped and that's because there's a little pin here, right here. And the trick is to get this little pin right in that slot right there. So you just got to keep that in mind. So you start from a little further back, you hug it against the rail and you just give it a little push and you'll know it's in there when it fits just snug like that and clips in. Now, once again, obviously in my situation, it's pretty obvious that this being the last window goes where it goes. But if this was in the first, just a little reminder, big piece of plastic with the big piece of plastic right over here. But you gotta feed it through. You have two pieces of rail here. So you make sure that gets fed right through. Gotta make sure you got that second piece of plastic railing fed in. So a little two hand job. Get the front plastic, the slider here, not the second one, the big one, but the last one. You wanna get it right in this little line right here. So that's nice and snug. And then you're gonna wanna just line this up and you are gonna have to give it a little power. There we go, well that fits really snug and did require, you don't wanna force it too much, but it does require a little bit of power. And you just do the clips.
And if you've never worked with your hands before and don't like the idea of Velcro against them because you like to have very soft hands, well, that's fine. Different strokes for different folks, but you're gonna wanna put gloves on in that case. And then you just Velcro down. Because the whole time you have the Velcro rubbing up against your hands. So there it is. Uh, it's not the easiest and fastest uh, top removal. Uh, if you've had a Mustang, a BMW or a Mercedes or really any, any convertible, this is very different. It's an adjustment to get used to, but hey, if you have a garage, park it in the garage and run it all summer with the top down and when it rains, throw it in the garage. Cause for a lot of you, I bet this is gonna be a third or even a fourth vehicle. And uh, well, you have the option to just leave the top always off or if you're real lucky and you live in Arizona while well, you don't get much rain at all but here uh, it can be extremely warm during the day extremely cold at night and we can get rain just about any time so there you have it that takes care of that and subscribe because I'm going to be covering a whole lot of Bronco material, Maverick material, a whole lot of Maverick news coming up, a lot of coverage. I'm going to be doing a head-to-head -head between these two Badlands, a manual versus an automatic, and a 2.7 liter versus a 2.3. And I'm going to stuff myself in a trunk of a plug-in escape to tell you about the future at Ford because plug-in is hitting up almost every model. This is exciting, but is it good? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Well, I'll be covering all that just for you, so stay tuned. And I wish you all more cars and more power and hope you get to put the pedal to the metal.